Michelle Ackerman and this is WWGTV. Today's show features work and artists from a group show at the Whitewater Gallery entitled Automatic Reaction. The show is on display at the gallery from November 1st to the 24th. Automatic Reaction is an exhibition of contemporary work that reflects in spirit work done by the Automatiste movement. The Automatistes were a group of French-Canadian surrealist artists in the 1940s who maintained that automatic artwork, drawing on the unconscious, irrational, surreal, and radical, was a purer aesthetic than other mainstream movements of the day. The Automatic Reaction exhibition at the Whitewater Gallery, featuring Martin Ackerman, John Atkinson, Calaire Boudreau, Daniel Lingzinga, Jim Ruskowski, Roger Neal, Janine Schreier, Ken Stang, and the Automatic Silva Culture Society explores this theme through contemporary artwork. Hi, I'm John Atkinson. I'm Claire Boudreau. Our piece is called um, Fully Automatic 710 Split. This is it. Um, we, uh, we, we collaborated, we, we made it together. We, we made one drawing. There's two parts to it. <laughs> um, the, the piece is, uh, is the first time we've ever collaborated on a work um, and we thought it was appropriate to collaborate on a piece for this particular show you know, being that the uh, whole process for the show or for the piece I should say um, was quite automatic in that um, we timed the entire work the entire work uh, took seven hours and ten minutes from um, discussing the concept of the work to completing it yeah so that was um, that was a very co coincidental thing that, that it ended up in the title because we had titled it before we timed it, so that was very yeah, odd that that quite quite odd. But the most but the most yeah, interesting thing about this is uh, we came to North Bay about four <coughs> years ago, and the first thing we did when we arrived in North Bay was bowl. So I think the piece is sort of appropriate in that way. My name is Jim Ruskowski, and part of the Automatic Reaction Show at the Whitewater Gallery this month. The piece that I'm standing in front of is a direct result of an attempt to be somewhat spontaneous, and yet at the same time incorporate some conscious and design plan in my construction. The piece is entitled Automatic Reaction, and involves the happenstance of, of falling upon a piece of machinery that I found interesting to look at and then picking up on that, decide to do a full-scale rendering much larger than life. The actual mechanical piece is from a sewing machine, and I incorporated that in the drawing, along with a lot of scraffito marks, which have become a trademark in most of my work recently. The, uh, the playing around with the, the psychic nature of dealing with the unconscious and the conscious is something that the automatists uh, have uh, apparently worked with and borrowed from the surrealists. Uh, my attempts at dealing with serendipity or chance is perhaps not as, as uh, psychic in its uh, intention. The mechanical elements of scratching into the surface, however, are definitely automatistic in nature. As far as the serrational or the non-preconceived writing and paint that Bourdois spoke of in his work, mine is a little bit more uh, deliberate and planned. Uh, hello, my name is Daniel Alzinga, and I'm participating in the Whitewater Gallery's uh, Automatic Reaction Exhibition, which is running in parallel with the Kennedys. And uh, my uh, submission for this piece was a, an installation of uh, found objects, which I've created um, in the space, which is in the gallery here. The concept of automatic for me was more the idea of constructing found objects that are very intimate with the surrounding they're put in. So in other words, they need to be uh, put pl placed together in an environment that's very site-specific. And for this piece, I've set the uh, work up almost in the center of the gallery, uh, just slightly off. But the idea of all the pieces being put together is uh, the automatic section uh, part of the piece. Good evening, I'm Janine Schreier. These are my two pieces for the Automatic Reaction Show. Uh, the first one right there is uh, called the Construction Maze, and it was made of found object on a construction site. And the second one is called Voyage with a Line. And, on, and with this piece, I just 
took the line and just meandered all over the paper and see where it led me, just like the automatist did. My name's Martin Ackerman, and this is my piece um, in the Automatic Reaction Show entitled um, Lunchbox Under Tension. And um, it's basically uh, made up of uh, two sections interconnected, um, a platform made out of wood with a microphone standing on top of it, which is connected up to another platform made out of wood with a lunchbox uh, suspended floating under tension uh, in between the floor and the ceiling. The lunchbox has um, speakers inside of it, so when someone uh, comes up to the microphone, um, it's suggested by the piece that one talk into it and interact and uh, speak through the lunchbox. My name is Ken Stang, and my contribution to the show consists of three computer pieces. Um, all my artwork in the show represents the three, what I think are the major features of the automatisse. Uh, one of the works is uh, focusing on their re um, rejection of bourgeois values. Another one focuses on their automatic reaction thesis that automatic creation is sometimes very interesting. And the third piece focuses in on their focus on, or their emphasis on the literary. And all my works have textual elements. Okay, this particular piece um, is sort of what might be called an animated concrete poem. Uh, concrete poetry consists of textual elements but the visual appearance of the text is what makes them uh, particularly interesting. What I've done is taken some of my early experiments on paper and animated them, programmed them, so that the computer is presenting the, the poems. And as I say, they always contain some visual element. In a moment, you'll see it in this one. You can see one of the other features you have when you create a, a work this way is you have control over the timing, how long a person is allowed to focus on a particular line. Okay, this, um, this piece has actually no visual elements in it whatsoever except that the text is presented on the computer monitor, but it relates to the, the concept of automatic creation. It's an artificial intelligence program, and what it does is it creates sentences, grammatically correct sentences, um, totally on its own, on the basis of the vocabulary that's present in the, in the computer. And one can modify the vocabulary uh, at will, and I... Um, I have a sort of basic vocabulary that's in there right now that it's using to generate these sentences. The interesting thing here is in auto as in automatic um, visual art is that here it's the computer doing it and the computer obviously has no soul and it's totally spontaneous and random yet a good percentage of the time you actually get um, sentences that are um, well sometimes poetic certainly uh, interesting. Um, I'll read you a couple as they come up, in case they're not visible. Often Picasso, Phyllis, and Flo have exploded together, even though Matthew did not like it. Nobody sought Anne Boleyn. She did it to herself and then became circular about it. 
In the joystick there is an actor, but in what king is there a corner? Um, the way it works is uh, the, the program has a set of basic syntaxes, basic sentence structures, and it knows what kind of verb to, or what kind of word, what part of speech to stick in the sentence. And then it randomly selects from the available vocabulary after randomly selecting the, the sentence. And uh, uh, what I have done on occasion is print it out. You can print out the, the output. I printed out the output and when I like the sentence and I read it off as a poem and some people have commented on what a, what a good poem it is, but the computer itself has generated it and that's about as automatic as you can get. <laughs> I go by the name of Bud Alder um, and I'm the spokesperson for the Automatic Silviculture Society. When we learned that this exhibition was taking place and that we would be given a spot to um, uh, put up a, an exhibit, we um, sat down at, at a table, a kitchen table, and uh, mulled over as a group what, what would be a good project to do. And we determined that what we would like to do is work with trees and uh, form the Automatic Silviculture Society to, uh, to do exactly that. We're recently formed and maybe soon to be disbanded. But we're a very um, an enthusiastic group. And we decided that we would look at what the uh, automatic, automatist artists did historically and try to adapt the, the whole tenet of thinking toward tree planting. And the result is a video production that uh, shows us with our project uh, in the uh, field in Powassan. And the final result is here. It's, it's a television monitor that will um, play the, the uh, video program and some verbal explanations and some physical uh, explanations. The, the, one of the shovels we used, some of the trees that we planted that were left over that we'll plant later after the exhibition is over, and the original pink ribbon that uh, we used to uh, encircle the uh, sculpture after it was finished. All of this we put down on tape. Now and then the Automatic Silviculture Society meets to have a look at projects it's done in the past or, and also to uh, discuss uh, future projects. Uh, one day recently we met and uh, had a look at the alignment that I helped to uh, put together. This, this alignment is, uh, has its northernmost point at a farm in uh, Chisholm Township near Powassan. And that's where we are now. And uh, its southernmost point is at Harborfront in Toronto. And it, it follows a line that has trees planted on it and uh, various things, even the CM Tower is, is in, on the line. But uh, we're at the northernmost point now and just approaching the large sort of terminal stone. The stone itself has um, a pattern carved on it, and in the center it has a, a lead plug that, that has been inserted into a hole in the stone. There's a similar carving on the stone at Harborfront. Now, this was done a number of years ago, and, and the, uh, the stone at Harborfront has moved around considerably with, with the development down there, but uh, it's still there. Uh, this stone is, was on, in place and uh, was probably there initially and, and whoever cleared the fields had built other things around it. Another project that we also went to have a look at the same day was Neil Gillespie's uh, rock wall. And uh, this rock wall is a very fascinating thing. It, it begins nowhere and meanders beautifully through the trees and gradually ends up at, at a location where it has no reason to end. 
but it, it has it's a very beautiful thing as it snakes its way through the um, undergrowth and uh, works its way around trees and takes advantage of larger rocks that were already in place that uh, were una that he was unable to move. Uh, Neil was explaining it to us as we went along here. He's in the uh, orange cap. So um, had a walk through the woods and, and through the fields to uh, just see what was going on and, and a very interesting thing happened. As we were walking along the trail, we discovered a ribbon and uh, Zeke the dog actually discovered it first, but we all found it and, and decided to follow the ribbon. Discovered, much to our surprise, a whole little pail full of abandoned trees. And we thought this is a, a perfect idea for uh, our next project. And it was like an instant idea or an automatic reaction, so it fit right into our mandate, which is the Automatic Silviculture Society. Once we got to the trees and had a look at them, we pondered our project for a while and, and it all occurred to us at the same time that what we should do is just take a tree, go off in different directions and plant them. After we discovered the trees and uh, we made the spontaneous decision to uh, walk off a few feet in, uh, in all different directions to uh, plant them, we then took the ribbon that we'd found initially and uh, strung it between ourselves and uh, discovered that we'd formed a, a very nice neat circle around the mound where we found the trees initially. So we've ended up with a uh, with a nice little uh, grouping of trees that will uh, grow automatically and, and form um, an enclosure. And with discussion, we decided to call this Auto Root.
Thanks very much for joining us tonight. Automatic Reaction will be on display at the gallery from November 1st to the 24th. And be sure to come to Tim Howe's Alternative Performance at the gallery November 21st at 8 p.m. See you then.